Hello, just popping in real quick to tell you about my podcast, Unruly Fashion, brought to you by the Podpire Network. I'm your host, Noella Eze. From the title of the podcast, you can tell that it's unruly. It's not going to be a regular fashion podcast. It's not conventional. It's not normal. It's not what you expect to see. But it's going to be quite the experience. Where can you find it? Well, come hang out with us every Wednesday, wherever you find your podcast. It's going to be great. I can tell you that for free. I mean, that's where all the cool kids are. So unless you're trying to tell me you're not cool, then damn, I don't know what to tell you, son. Um, Yeah, show up. I expect to see you there. Come along. See you later. The following podcast is a production of the Pod Pie Network. Find and listen to our podcast at thepodpiernetwork.com or wherever you enjoy your podcast. The Pod Pie Network, a family of inspired podcasts. Welcome to another episode of Hairbrain Schemes. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Look, I'm so, I'm so excited. I'm so happy, uh, Sibel. And of course, uh, we should probably introduce ourselves first. So I am Bibby. Uh, I'm Sibel. And the other voice is Sibel, yes. Uh, and uh, look, Sibel, I, I'm so, so happy because last week's episode was so good. I, I personally listened to it twice. Nice. It was it was really good. I enjoyed it. It was nice. very funny. It was very, you know, um, it was very informative. Uh, you know, um, I think overall it was very funny. Um, I'm so glad, man. I'm but so, and you know, we we really enjoyed making that one. We did. It I was. Think, one I of think. Th- I think. You know, even though we ended up having to record it, that's the twice. Thing. It was. That's I think it thing. was. It was almost more fun. Is that no, 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 no? It was. It was way more fun, without a doubt. Because yeah. if I go back and listen to the initial recording that was riddled with the technical issues, yeah, um, you were terrible the first time. <laughs> How dare you, sir? How dare you? This is the point at which I take off my glove and slap you across the face with it, right? How dare you, sir? Right? No, but look, you know, that that episode on Count Victor Lustig was so good that uh, this week we decided- You even call him the Count. Right, the count, the count, right? The yeah, count, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, it was yeah, so yeah. good that we decided to, you know, maybe go into a little, you know, uh, uh, subsection of our pod here on on people who sell landmarks and monuments that they have no business selling. That this week we're going to be talking about another such person, uh, which is just fantastic to me. Oh, because- I'm, I'm so excited! You also <laughs> did me a huge favor that you gave me an accent to play with. <laughs> one of my favorite accents you know this you spill, know this is spill spill the irish accent i get to do an irish accent no but 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 he he wasn't irish man he man he, he was, he was born, born to irish, to irish parents yes we're yes. getting have ahead you, of have ourselves you met people who are <laughs> like there are people in boston who are like 10 generations down and right. still have some version of an Irish some accent. Version, this some, guy definitely yeah. had an Irish accent. Jeez. Okay. I, I guess you've decided he has. Uh, he has. He has to, yeah. All good. right. All right. All right. Fine. I promise you. Get you to I'm do, not 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 without even without even a stereotype <laughs> or being incorrect. You get to incorrect. do your Irish accent. It's fine. Yeah. Can we move on? <laughs> fine. Fine. Yeah. Let's fine. move on now, fine. Sabelle. Fine. Um, fine. You know, for 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 Whatever. for for most people, they don't get to see my recording space. You do. And yes. you get to see every week this big painting on the wall behind me. Yeah. And that, my friend, uh, if you recognize, is the Brooklyn Bridge, oh, right? That is the Brooklyn the, uh, Bridge. So this I is- it was McDonald's double <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I, I highly suggest that you stay off social media for the next month because you're going to have people in your DMs for that very, very uncultured statement that you just made on the Brooklyn Bridge. The Brooklyn Bridge is an icon, I'll have you know, sir. Um, I'm aware. But uh, yeah, no, that is the Brooklyn Bridge. And so it is with great pleasure, uh, for me at least, I don't care about what you think about it, Sibel, that we get to talk about this today. Uh, Because 
Today, we're talking about a certain George C. Parker, the man who allegedly sold the Brooklyn Bridge twice for several years. Per week. (laughs) Twice Twice a a week. week. Twice a week for several years. It's a brilliant, it was a brilliant con. It was a brilliant con. And we'll give more details because he did it. He did do it in a very <laughs> clever way. Yeah. I have to say, like, dude, if, if so, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's that sentence is hands down. One of the funniest things in the English language that I've ever encountered. Apparently he, it's a saying. So, I didn't know that. No, did you of know course it was. A yes, saying? of course. If you believe that I have a bridge to sell you. Yes. <laughs> I knew You've that. heard that saying? I never absolutely, heard that saying. absolutely. It's quite that common. I have a bridge to sell you in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that That's came that came from the work of uh, Mr. Parker. Mm-hmm. Mm, interesting. Also, by the way, for for the record, uh, George C. Parker was also known as James J. O'Brien and Warden Kennedy, also known as Mr. Roberts and Mr. Taylor. So lots of aliases there. A man by many names. A con man by any other name is still a con man. So yeah, man, Um, this is, this is, this is going to be good. So um, shall we uh, dive right into it, uh, my good sir? And just off the top, I'm just going to say not too much is written or recorded anywhere that we've been able to find on this guy's childhood uh we do know that he was born to irish parents um in the united in, states and um, in 1860 in, in new york 1860 in new york that's pretty much as far it, as it goes with his yeah. childhood and early experiences um i will say though that this fact that he was born to irish immigrant parents um does entirely make this um something that we've discussed on this podcast in the past about which is it makes it a crime of affinity right uh remember sarah Ooh, how what? Uh, sarah what how um crime of affinity yeah i mean sarah how conning other women right yeah, absolutely. um yeah. you know um and and we find that thread in other episodes of this podcast where some some member of some minority or specific subset of society um decides to con or build schemes around a group that they're already naturally a part of exactly therefore they exactly would benefit from the trust of exactly the Exactly. It's like, accurate? I'm Irish, you're Irish, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, we have the same struggles. And of course, uh, I'm going to trust you more than I trust anyone else. Right. So mm-hmm. that's what a crime of affinity is. Uh, and, you know, we are going to be looking at, you know, someone who almost exclusively targeted new immigrants, knowing what it was to be an immigrant watching his parents be immigrants and all the struggles uh, that they must have gone through, right? He knew that immigrants made a specific type of mark that he was just suited uh, to speak directly to. So um, let's uh, let's dive into this. So we already talked about the fact that he was born in the 1800s, right? Um, We talked about the fact that we don't know too much about his early life other than he was born in New York uh, to Irish parents. Um, the Wikipedia does say that he had four brothers and three sisters and he graduated high school. So, again, this... Educated by that period of time. It, no, absolutely. I mean, high school high school diploma, nothing to sneeze at, right? No. Um, given the time. But, yeah, no, no. This was... But, again, this was a big family, right? Um, this was a, a, a big family. I mean, this means that there were eight of them in total, right? Um, and uh, you can imagine that um, given the largeness of, of that family, of that brood, um, that uh, perhaps they were not all getting, you know, um, the kind of attention that, that they might have been getting if the family were smaller and the parents were a little wealthier, right? Because again, you know, immigrant parents, they were probably very busy working around the clock to keep their yeah, family I afloat. Like, yeah, I, I imagine that realistically there was a lot of just 
survival struggles, you know. Exactly. Very basic stuff going on, you know, on the Marslow's hierarchy of needs there. Um, you know, I I I I can see that as well. Um look here, Georgie boy. It's uh it's been a long year. There's uh there's a lot of you. And uh we're a little skint. So uh we're not going to be able to get you the the news thing that's available. So we're going to just have to go to Mass together on Christmas and we're going to have to thank the Lord for uh, everything that we have. And we are, we're, uh, we are lucky to have a roof over our head and some food on the table, right? And uh, we're, we're just going to have to hold it together. And Jordy, you're going to work hard. And one day you're going to buy yourself everything you need. All right? So, so hold your head up high. Um, and uh, we're all gonna have a great Christmas together, right? All right, Georgie boy, off you go. That was painful. That was painful. Ideally, behind that, you will have violins and stuff. We'll see what we can do in the edit. But uh, yeah, man, that was that was painful, man. That was sad. Violins or maybe just some sad I've got soundtrack. A tear in my we'll eye see. right now. Okay. Yeah, was, just that was... one eye tear Denzel style. Just yeah, man. That's, yeah. uh, so he's he's such a yeah. he's such a he's you know especially Denzel he's like he's he's such a typical Irish actor too. <laughs> Denzel the Irishman. Uh, <laughs> Denzel. The, I mean, yeah. if if Robert Downey Jr. could be a black man in oh Tropic Thunder, my God. I mean, Tropic Thunder, dude, that was another age. <laughs> That was a different age. But what a movie. What a movie. I watched that movie. Dude, that movie and cannot I, happen now. I, I watched that movie and I know that I should be offended by so many things and outraged. But it is just so good and so funny. And I'm just like, ha, huh, I know I shouldn't be laughing at this. It, like, it came when, into being. Right. So, Tropic Thunder came into being during during – a bit you know like you and i come from a generation that has seen many evolutions in terms of what is socially proper i am not that old excuse me excuse me speak for yourself i'm i'm, not, I'm, a, young uh, I'm a young buck yeah, i'm a young buck i'm a young buck yeah he uh yeah but like for you know there was you know we're we're from the age of like Chappelle's show and mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. like undercover brother undercover and brother I, I grew up watching Undercover Brother. Um, like that was my one of my favorite movies as a child. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I unfortunately didn't. Act, so like I I was not well informed because I right. lived in Dubai about right. the realities of um, right. of the struggles of Black people in right. America and right. right around the world. Uh, and so I only saw these things from the lens of comedy and right. came to America un, unaware that um these were not things you joke about that these were sensitive <laughs> topics that couldn't be joked about outside right. of, you know by mm -hmm. just anyone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um which i'm very lucky to have close friends who who educated me before anyone violently <laughs> someone anyone violently educate re-educated me right um, right but right. yeah, I, uh, but yeah, like, so yeah, you, you, you know, like Tropic, Tropic Thunder was, was an age. It was like, there's no way it could happen now. And, and it probably shouldn't, but yeah, just a fascinating, fascinating movie. How did we get to Tropic Thunder from the family of George? You brought up Denzel George Washington Parker, as an right. Irish, an Irish immigrant in New York in the 1860s. So you, you know. brought that up. You, no, I, you, I said I had. I said I had one tear in my eye from what you said, like Denzel. No, you said and then you I said, had. I had and, one tear in my eye like Denzel. <laughs> so uh, fine, fine. Yeah, so again, you know, big family, maybe not much by way of, you know, financial stability. Um, you can see why he probably grew up a hungry guy, you know, hungry for success, hungry to make it and make it big because, you know, um, and again, this is all speculation, right? But um, yeah. 
you can sort of draw from certain things, you know, it's like, ah, oh, you know, they're immigrants. Okay. First of all, right. They probably don't have too much money in, in that time. And then they have, you know, this huge family, right. Um, unless of course we're completely wrong and they immigrated rich, uh, as some people did, right. They immigrated rich to come build empires in, in the new world as, as, as some people called it. Um, you know, and, and so maybe we're completely off base here. Maybe they were rolling in the dough, right. Who knows? Uh, Who knows? but we did, we do know that he did, uh, graduate high school, which is, which is great. Um, so, and it, you know, if he did graduate high school, it does say that they were obviously well off enough that he didn't mm-hmm. have to drop out. Right. So, right. you know, right. who knows? Who knows? Right. It's an interesting question to ask and it's, uh, yeah, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's take a quick break and then let's come back and talk to you about why the Brooklyn Bridge was almost uniquely um, uniquely suitable for for scams and cons of the nature that uh, George C. Parker perpetrated uh, about that time. So don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. All right, and we are back. So let's talk about the brooklyn bridge and and why it was so good uh to to con artists so the brooklyn bridge was quite long at the time well it is still quite long um and and it uh long it was bridge long long bridge um and um it was you know sort of just ideally proportioned that if you are doing a crime Anywhere on the bridge, mm-hmm. <laughs> you can make a hasty, beat a hasty retreat uh, mm-hmm. before the police get too close. You have clear lines of sight everywhere, both directions. <laughs> um, and also, the Brooklyn Bridge was so situated that ships carrying immigrants who are just arriving to the United States mm-hmm. uh, by way of you know landing in New York... The um, famous Ellis Island. Right. They had a clear line of sight of the newly minted... Um, magnificent. Magnificent impressive. Brooklyn Bridge, yeah. right? And so, you know, it was one of those things, as you're coming to this country for the first time, it's literally one of the first things that you see of the country. Now, um, the brilliant thing that um you know George Parker and other con artists of the time did was they had accomplices working on those ships and so those accomplices would sort of suss out the more wealthier passengers on the oh, ships I love this right? term in one of one of our sources they use mm-hmm. the term find guys with a crowded ocus Mm. And ocus is an old term for a wallet. Right. And crowded means that they have like a lot it's of money bulky. in there. It's yeah, bulky. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, and I just wanted to quickly throw in just to give our listeners a little bit of context. So mm-hmm. your reminder that George C. Parker was born in 1860. The Brooklyn Bridge opened in May of 1883. Mm-hmm. So about when he was 23 years old. Right. So young so, man. Please be. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Young so man. He was just he useful was just exuberance, to get going. reckless, you know, yeah, reckless, yeah, you know, full going. of life, you know, ready to ready to do everything doable. Right. And so yeah. um, thanks for that context, Sabal. So, you know, so the brilliant thing is, you know, um, George C. Parker had these spies essentially who worked on these ships and their job was to let him know as soon as the ships arrived at port uh of the folks in there that had you know uh a bit of uh, you know a, a bit of wealth on them right who right, seemed yeah, wealthy yeah. who seemed ready to spend and take over the 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 country good and, marks. <laughs> right good marks exactly yeah. and so he would immediately approach them and another thing that he did you know was he would have on him these extremely well done forgeries of certificates of ownership, right? 
uh, right of, of and the Brooklyn apparently Bridge. had some he had some pretty like well situated offices as well. he did he did which we'll right. talk about when we talk about uh you know another of his scams right which he which mm. he did from time to time uh sort of the run rate business uh to his larger <laughs> the side hustle <laughs> the side will. hustle right literally hustle the side hustle um but <laughs> yeah so he would approach them and say hey uh you buy no doubt uh, actually, let me brush up my old timey. I'm not going to do an Irish accent, man. I'm just going to do a a fairly passable old timey. Do a New York one. No, you no, could do a New York no, accent. No, I've heard you do no, a New York accent. No, no, I never heard no. you do it. Come on, BB. <laughs> Come on, BB. A B B. A B B. No, listen, I, I don't that trust New York accent. I don't trust myself today, so I'm just gonna say, hey, you you know that the uh, the, the Brooklyn Bridge uh, connects, uh, uh, you know, two very important corridors of, of New York, of New York, sir. I tell you, New York, and. So so, um, what you could do is, uh, you know, because of the cost of maintenance and everything is, is getting rather tiresome for me, and I just like to retire young and, and, and go off to a tropical island somewhere. I'm willing to sell this to you, um, and uh, you can uh, you can erect toll booths uh, along the bridge and charge people for access, uh, so that they have to pay you going to and from Manhattan. Uh, and you know, it, it should be fine, right? It, it, sh- it should be fine. I love it. Well done. And I think the brilliant thing about this is that the reality was they were charging a toll. So at the time, these people would have gone across and been like, oh, they do charge a toll every time people go across. If we buy the bridge, we could charge the toll. So and apparently, <laughs> and, and apparently so, people would so if you realize- the- so a few of them actually got as far as going to <laughs> to set up their own toll booths along the bridge, and they had to be arrested or or disturbed by police who were like, "What are you doing? What on earth?" <laughs> and All then right. they they pull out these nicely done certificates of ownership, and they're like, "No, man, that those are no good. Uh, I don't know who this person the is." The Brooklyn but- <laughs> Bridge is not for sale. <laughs> the Brooklyn Bridge was. <laughs> was never for sale this is state property man what are you talking about um also, so yeah, yeah. It, at the time it cost 15.5 million dollars yeah at the which time. is about which is about 400 million in today's money yeah apparently. at, at yeah. maximum Dorsey yeah. Barker one sold it for five thousand. <laughs> so which at is no a lot point, of money but at <laughs> no point did he ever come close <laughs> to selling it for like even the like you know what what do you call it bar napkin math right 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 like just so yeah so his the people on the on those like the ships coming into ellis island were definitely also finding the people who would like obviously be suckered by bad math yeah yeah, i think i think i'm not sure exactly what but my guess is that george p parker was probably going like all right look here the deal is you pay the city for the ability to set up a toll booth. And then you pay us a certain amount every after a year. So we get a certain thing and we trust you to show us all the accounts. <laughs> and you get to choose what, how much toll you're going to charge. Right? And you get the... So I think... You have to I run the whole you, thing. Yeah. So I think I think that's probably how he was selling because I'm sure there must have been many people who are like, right. there's no right. way I'm getting the Brooklyn Bridge that right. cheap. That's a steal. It's like... I'm the so, luckiest guy in the world. I just right, got here like, and already I, I've been offered the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get more of the family over. <laughs> yeah. I'd definitely be suckered by that. But not everyone would. And right. so right. I think I, my guess, my guess, I don't know. What do you think? Like, I think so, realistically, well, if he was doing it twice a week, he <laughs> wasn't. Se- he definitely wasn't selling the Brooklyn Bridge. I think right. what he was actually doing is he was selling licenses to sell up toll booths. I mean, hey, look. The thing says he was selling the Brooklyn Bridge. All he was right, selling right, the Brooklyn right, Bridge. Right, 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 now, right, Sybil, right, I got a question right, for you. Right, right, right. What yeah, would on, what would you do? What, how would you have felt if the first day in Canada you arrive and just as you're leaving the airport, someone I approaches you. Someone approaches you and says, "Hey, man, we're the trying CN to we're, we're, tra- we're currently trying to sell off the CN Tower." Uh, 
uh, dude, I was just thinking that. Uh, I'm sure just you've seen the that. photos of Drake on the tower, man. It's really exploding right now. Dude, it's now or never, bro. <laughs> what would you what would you have done? You'd have thought about it, right? <laughs> No, I wouldn't have. I would have just been like first nope. day in Canada. First day, you're literally I, just leaving the airport. I right? wouldn't have, no, I'd just been like, I'm too poor. Like I'm someone just approaches not. you and says, You look like the kind of guy that can that can that can recognize a good investment. Let's 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 talk in my beds. <laughs> let's talk in my beds. Let's talk uh, let's have a quick uh tete a tete let's have a beds. let's have a conversation in my Maybach. <laughs> in my <And> then, <laughs> In Maybach. And then after the conversation completes, please get up in the Maybach. Please. Even though I know we are on the highway. <laughs> you know, you know, you know the buy? You know the buy? Okay, okay, okay. Get out. You know what I think yeah. probably would have happened realistically, and I'm sure someone has done this. They were like, are you interested in CN Tower crypto? In CN NFT. <laughs> yeah, CN Tower NFTs. Right. It's like, it's like for the rest of forevermore, you will be fe- your photo or whatever will be featured, and you will own a part of whatever CN Tower thing. Right. And that I'm willing to bet will happen. Right. So yeah, yeah, that yeah, I wouldn't man. be surprised by. Yeah. Do you know, yeah. like, for example, in the new what is it Star Wars show, one of the like really old CN Tower whiskey bottles or something showed up. Really. And it's apparently like worth hundreds of dollars now. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, just because it's like it was, it's in the shape of the scene, so it looks really right. like futuristic. Right, right, so, yeah. right. Yeah. Hey, it's all good, man. It's all good. I <laughs> bet though, if someone had reached out to you and said, "Hey, I'm easily suckered, BB. I'm easily suckered. I'm easily suckered." I someone once reached out to me and was like, "Hey, you want to co-host a podcast?" And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, "I'm in." I'm in. Easily for suckered. zero for zero to little financial gain will you co-host a podcast with me <laughs> what does it take ah uh, nothing just give up your entire weekends yeah oh your entire but weekends. we love it yeah no it's great we, we love yeah. it so yeah man um he um he he did this uh, allegedly twice a week for several years this was essentially his job like he would get up the same way you and i get up for our day right uh, put on his suit and tie and go to his job and he would do this successfully for <laughs> for years another day another <laughs> sucker <laughs> Now it does say that he, you know, he at some point became known as the greatest con artist in America. Uh, but he he got caught uh, three times, um, and that was not his only scam. So he also sold the original Madison Square Garden. He also <laughs> sold the Statue of Liberty, um, and also he sold the tomb site of the president uh grand right yes. um which he he claimed uh, of whom he claimed he you know to be the grandson right right so right this was just another thing and as sibel was alluding to earlier he was so dedicated to his craft that he got offices really close to the tune and that right. was uh his in quote real estate holding and processing company um, that handled the paperwork. So as soon as he got someone suckered in, he would take them to the office. He would give them a tour of the tomb site. You know, uh, you know, get them all morbidly excited to own a piece of history, <laughs> and then <laughs> he would have them go back to the office where everything seemed very legit. I mean, everything must have been really good because you know, um, you know, it was an entire office, probably staffed up as well with people looking busy all the time, and they would give him. Uh, money to have the rights to own the gravesite of a dead president, which is I don't I don't know why there's so much fascination with that, but there must have been such an well, obvious I market think Grant, Grant that was, um, what was it? Grant had something to do with the uh, the union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, he was General Grant, and so at some point before he became president. Right. So yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's 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 just I don't know, man. This fascination with owning, you know, tomb sites and, and well, it's and, not the it's not the ownership so much as it's the ability to, you know, charge charge uh, people charge to come see it, right? So it's it's the greed, right? It's it's always always the greed. It's just I don't know, man. 
And oh, people no, never think, learn. Yeah, people people never learn. I never learn. Um, I really enjoy the fact that they bring him to court once. And Phoebe, do you rem- did you read this part of the story? They bring him to court once. And as, as they're waiting to basically process him, a sheriff comes in from the bitter cold outside yes. and drops his hat and drops his, his hat coat. coat. And Sibel, okay. what does uh, our guy do? George C. Parker grabs the coat, grabs the hat, <laughs> and he just puts him on and walks out in full confidence. Full confidence, and he okay. even sort of, you know, says to people as he's going out, Well, uh, it's cold out there. Uh, wishing you a, a happy new year. Oh, it's cold out there. It's cold out there. You have yes. a great new year. Have a Take great care new year. Take care of yourself and your family. And the court officials salute him as he goes out because he has on the sheriff's hat and coat. Yeah, that's just that's just fantastic, man. That is just fantastic. So, oh, yeah, yeah, he he does all these things, all these capers. It's absolutely interesting and and fantastic. These adventures, uh, things that would be completely impossible in this day and age. Although, uh, I have read somewhere in one of the sources that um, recently, I think in, in the 20, 2010s, um, uh-huh. somebody was selling off pieces of wood that were purported to be part of the original Brooklyn Bridge. Um, and uh, that was a lie. <laughs> and people were buying this stuff. Like people were paying good money to own a part of the original Brooklyn Bridge. It's like, dude, so many people out there have so much money. Why aren't they spending it this way? But yeah, man. Yeah, that happened as recently as the 2010s. So was the original Brooklyn Bridge built in wood it wasn't no 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 not not it wasn't built in wood but there were wooden parts of the bridge right there were wooden like either slats or sidebars or whatever there there were because originally it was built to support horse drawn -drawn carriages and and overhead trains that kind of thing you know so 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 there must have been you know bits of wood used in the overall construction and it was these bits of wood that somebody or some people were purporting to sell to unsuspecting marks uh who gave a good amount of money um to own wood they probably you know, just harvested out their backyards so you know, and you know what i'm wondering about i mm-hmm. went to berlin a few years ago right and i bought a piece of the berlin wall <laughs> uh, did i buy a piece of the berlin wall or not i'm wondering bro i uh I hate to break it to you, but uh, <laughs> you have just bought a piece of my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it was like the official government like spot. So I think how do you I know? Was, how do you know? Uh, how do you so know? They have this. What is it? The checkpoint Charlie. Mm-hmm. Uh, checkpoint Charlie, which was like the only like point where they had the you know where people could pass through the wall uh, through the wall you know mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. there is a there was a uh i mean if memory serves there was like a uh souvenir shop there that was mm-hmm. and like information booth and i mm-hmm. think i got it from there mm-hmm. i don't know mm-hmm. that could have been just someone's <laughs> private business bro and it, just it could have been really a official. piece of concrete that someone just spray painted <laughs> it's totally possible all i know is yeah i mean who knows it didn't cost much uh, so, hey, Chris. Hey, yeah. doesn't have to cost much if they sell it to 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 many, you know, enough people. I got suckered. <laughs> I got suckered. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. It's probably legit, but um, yeah, man, people do put a lot of value um to to these pieces of history, and so yeah, the I think, Brooklyn. I think they do. I mean, if yeah. someone, if if there was like an original piece of wood from the mm-hmm. original Brooklyn Bridge, and it mm-hmm. was being sold at one of the you know, one of the museums in New York City. I mm-hmm. think I might drop some money on it. I really mm-hmm. would. Mm-hmm. I'd consider it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just for the, you know, yeah, I, I guess, you know, this is something that people do. So, yeah, um, you know, he did many things. He had an entire real estate con empire, uh, did George C. Parker. And he was quite successful too. Um, So we said he did get arrested one time. He walked literally out of the courthouse, uh, unstopped and unchecked because he was that good. 
he was that good. He was saluted <laughs> and, 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 you know, but eventually his luck ran out and uh, he was put in the slammer for good. So let's take a quick break and then we'll come tell you um, about how that went. But uh, yeah, man, just, uh, he just sounds like a fun guy who had a lot of fun uh, just uh, taking people, separating, separating consciously decoupling people from their money, right? Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, what a great way to put that. Yeah. Uh, yeah talk just, to you all uh, soon. Don't go yeah. nowhere. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Hey, everyone. All right. So from an article from the Brooklyn Daily Eagle, November 23rd, 1928, titled Seller Sent to Sing Sing for Life. All right. So I'm going to try and do this in a New York accent. George C. Parker. We started the world by selling the Brooklyn Bridge to a hick, and as a trustee 20 years ago, walked out of the Raymond Street Jail, fooling the guards by using the coat and hat of Sheriff Finnerty. Was today sent to Sing Sing for life by County Judge Alonzo G. McLaughlin. And <laughs> yeah, I, I, I need to work on the New York accent, but I do enjoy doing it. I, I enjoyed and, hearing it, and at the time you, friend, he was he was. 68 years old, right? So, yeah, so he had he, a nice and by so he the had way, a nice good thing? run. Yeah, he started what? Like, I mean, if he was 23, 23 right? When the Brooklyn Bridge opened, right. I'm assuming he started right then. Right. Jeez, man. The the right. dude had a great this was his he had a retire. This was his retirement. This was his retirement. It he says got better, in one he got of the um, in, a meal. in one of the uh articles that we we check out, uh, you know, uh researching this, uh it says that he did not put up a fight, that it was quite, um, it was quite, um, what's the word now? Um, shocking. Amicable? That No, no, no. Shocking that he didn't put up a fight. Like when they arrested him the last time, he just said, yeah, I'm guilty. Like he, he pled guilty. Oh, he did wow. not put up a fight. So you might be right, Sabelle, that he just, he was just tired and he was just ready to go hang out with some dudes for the rest of his life. And just be taken care of and not have to look over his shoulder ever again, right? I mean, you know, from the running from the cops, it. right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He so, was quite popular, right? He was, he was. So actually, this racing elliebly.com, which is a source for this for this episode, says Parker was convicted of fraud three times. He his third conviction resulted in a life term in Sing Sing, where he was said to be enormously popular. Prisoners and even the guards and warden loved hearing Parker retell the stories of his career. So it doesn't look like it was a bad time for him. He was just, you know, he was a celebrity in, in, in the jail. I mean, this was a guy who at some point held the title of the greatest con man in America. So Hey, look, he's surrounded by fans, adoring fans every day. He tells yeah. his stories. They probably want to have lunch with him, um, you know, and, and and he's doing good. He's doing good. Yeah, he's like an old timer. So I guess for him, it was like either he goes on the run for life. Right. Or, or he goes like at 68. He's right. Like, or I can go and just like spend my last few years as yeah. an old timer. Exactly. And he lives for yeah. another eight years. So he passes away at the ripe everyone. age of, 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 of 76, right? Which is, I mean, for a person who spent their life doing crimes, that is an extremely generous life expectancy, uh, you know, for, for, for right. a, must have been quite a working life. criminal. Yeah. For a working criminal who was always getting in trouble and, you know, was widely known, that was a... Pretty good life expectancy, 76. Not bad, I man. Did pretty well. <laughs> Not Jeez, bad. Yeah. Did, did well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, and, please and don't this, do crimes. Let's remember, this don't was do his, cons. This was the fourth time they, <laughs> yeah. they caught him. Yeah. Yeah. This was the fourth time they can they were like, all right, you have your fourth strike fraud. Yeah. yeah. We are now sending you away. Yeah. 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 And I just heard, I just caught, I you know, I, I just heard me and you talking about how well he'd done for himself. And I was like, ooh, it's, there's someone out there listening to this. I'm like, yep, okay. Uh, this is a viable career path for me. Uh, please don't do cons. Don't We're not do glorifying do cons, criminality do cons, and stuff. People. Don't do it. Don't no. do it's it. It's bad. And it's if bad. you do, don't mention our podcast as your inspiration because we will not show up to your court hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I can promise you this. We will not show up. So don't do it. Okay. Yeah. 
that's just a little PSA there. But I think uh, that brings us to the end of the story uh, of the man who allegedly sold the Brooklyn Bridge twice a week uh, (laughs) for several years. I still can't get over that phrase, man. That sentence is twice a week for several years. I, I wonder, I wonder if someone ever showed up with like 20 people to construct like a really fancy toy. But I'm movie. sure that happened all the time. I'm sure it did. And I'm sure the that cops ha- were, the cops showed up and were like, <laughs> why are there 20, why is there a construction <laughs> crew here? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Hilarious. But anyway, that's the episode guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thank we you. We appreciate your, uh, support. We appreciate your love and we appreciate your uh, absolute loyalty. Um, <laughs> your undying, unquestioning loyalty to Hairbrain yeah. Scheme to, to this Hairbrain's podcast. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You will be spared. You will be. <laughs> when the reckoning commences, you will be spared. <laughs> Simply produce your iPhone and show us the last podcast you've listened to. And if Hairbrain Schemes <laughs> is was in one of the, the last three days, yeah, yeah within the last three days, you will be spared. Um, that is truly frightening. Um, but anyway, um, I once had a shirt of Stewie from Family Guy. Mm-hmm. said something along the lines: "You are not horrible." I will spare you. <laughs> <laughs> I will spare Stay you. Away. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, again, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We are Hairbrain Schemes. You can find us on Instagram at Hairbrain Schemes Pod. You can find us everywhere pods are cast. We thank you so, so, so deeply for everyone who has been instrumental in spreading the podcast by telling friends, family. Um, We are truly grateful for that because a podcast like ours only grows when people tell other people to listen. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, and for the record, listeners, mm-hmm. BB's BB's debt has finally been settled. He bought me bubble tea. I um, did it buy is, you it bubble tea. It is now a matter of public record. It is now a matter of public record that, that my debts BB's, have been paid. BB's debt has been paid. <laughs> That's right. His first, That's right. his his child is no longer. <laughs> <laughs> did you uh did you enjoy your bubble tea i think it was bubble tea and juice and i remember looking at oh the... no that's just uh, that's the name of the place it's oh Coco, okay fresh tea and juices oh fresh tea name, but everyone, uh, fresh tea and juice everyone just calls it cocoa and that's like what's right. the main thing it's right. great dude i like it right. it's like um they have a fresh milk i remember looking at the invoice when you sent it to me and i was like huh I have no yeah. recollection of authorizing juice. We must have a talk about this. <laughs> it's like, it like the tea I get. I, I sanctioned that. But the juice. Ha! <laughs> I, huh. I never sanctioned the juice. <laughs> I should have sent a photo of it. <laughs> this is, this right. is what they put in it. Right, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's black tea, milk, tapioca, and sago. Sounds nice. nice. Sounds nice. And Sounds they make nice. it warm, which is really mm. like so nice for the winter. That's good because that was a cold. I I remember that being a particularly cold day. So yeah, that yeah, must have been just what you needed, nice, right? Like, right. Treat, right. Yeah, right. Right. I remember saying to you that uh, I think the bill is like seven something with some cents at the end. And I remember saying to you, I almost rounded up to eight just to be able to say, now you owe me. And that would have. And that would have <laughs> bothered you. Insane. Yeah. That yeah. I know. Because if you're anything like me, like um, that would have yep. bothered me so much. I would look for any excuse to pay you back your 13 yep. cents or whatever. Right. Yep. So yep. I knew that if I'd done that, you would have gone down the same rabbit hole. So, uh, yeah, but I, I was, I was feeling kind for back 13 <laughs> cents to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm glad I, I'm glad I showed some restraint there. Um, but yeah, man, uh, good to, good to see you again and, uh, see you all next week on another episode of Ear Brain School. Yeah, thanks for joining. Thanks for laughing with us. Yeah. Bye now. Bye y'all.